answers to assignment questions. Question seventy-seven to eighty-nine. Question seventy-seven. You have to find the heat capacity of your cup of water. The power of the heater is thirty-five watt. First, you have to find the energy transfer to the water in three hundred seconds. Then, refer to your data to find the temperature rise in the corresponding period of time. Lastly, apply the formula C equals Q over delta T to find the heat capacity of your cup of water. Question seventy-eight: Why foam cup was used? Because foam is a better heat insulator than glass, so that heat loss to surroundings is reduced. Question seventy-nine: Why we should have a lid? Without a lid, there will be a lot of evaporation. And then there will be a lot of heat loss to surroundings. Then the temperature will rise more slowly. Question eighty: What's the use of the stirrer? It is used to mix the water well so that the temperature of water is uniform. Question eighty-one: Why we have to ensure the heater is totally immersed? In water, because otherwise there will be very large heat loss to surroundings, and more importantly, the heater may be overheated, and then it may melt itself. Question eighty-two: The temperature rises for a short time after the heater is turned off. How to measure the temperature rise more accurately? We should measure the highest temperature reached after the heater is turned off, and then we have to find the difference between that final highest temperature and the initial temperature. Question eighty-three. There is one thing that may affect the heat capacity of your cup of water, and that is the mass of the Water. Question eighty-four. Calculation questions. For that small cup of water, it has a small capacity of three hundred joule per degree Celsius. The water may absorb totally a thousand and five hundred joules of energy when its temperature increases by five degrees Celsius. You should apply equation five. In order to produce the same amount of energy, a thousand and five hundred joules, a twenty watt meter, have to operate for seventy five seconds. Question eighty five is a big piece of rod placed under the sun, and it is absorbing the energy from the sun at the rate of five hundred watt, that is five hundred joules per second. So that in five minutes, it will absorb altogether a hundred and fifty thousand joules of energy. The heat capacity of the rod is ten thousand joules per degree Celsius. You may then apply equation six and find the temperature rise of the rock. But the temperature rise of the rock usually is smaller because there is heat loss to the surroundings. Question eighty six. Simply apply the formula Q equals C delta T, where Q is eight thousand four hundred joules, and temperature rise delta T is five degrees Celsius. And so the answer is a thousand and six hundred eighty joule per degree Celsius. Don't forget to write the correct unit. Question eighty seven. Using the above information, find the heat capacity of one kilogram of water. Just now, in the last question, that zero point four kilogram of water has a heat capacity of a thousand six hundred eighty joules per degree Celsius. And so, for one kilogram, which is two point five times larger, 
the heat capacity would become 2.5 multiplied with 1,680. And so the answer is 4,200 joules per degree Celsius for that 1 kilogram of water. Question 88. This is a 2 kilogram aluminum block. It absorbs 7,200 joules of energy, so that its temperature increases by 4 degrees Celsius. You may apply the equation to find the heat capacity, which is the energy supplied divided by the temperature rise. In this way, you may find the heat capacity of the aluminum block. By the way, this aluminum block has a mass of 2 kg. So, in the next question, question 89, you are asked to find the heat capacity of 1 kg aluminum block. So, you may just divide the answer of the last question by 2 to get the heat capacity of a 1 kg aluminum block. Lesson 6, pre-lesson video, section 3.2. Section 3.2 Specify heat capacity As you can see in the last question, it would be more convenient to talk about the heat capacity per kilogram of a substance. And this is called specific heat capacity. Simply speaking, specific heat capacity is the heat capacity per kilogram of the substance. In other words, we may calculate the specific heat capacity by dividing the heat capacity by mass. Note that we use capital letter C to represent heat capacity, while we use a small letter C to represent specific heat capacity. So, equation 8 tells you how you may calculate specific heat capacity from the heat supply, Q divided by the mass M, and also the temperature rise, delta T. And in some cases, you may find equation 9 easier to apply. Also, the heat capacity, capital letter C, is related to the specific heat capacity, small letter C, by equation 10. In particular, water has a specific capacity of 4,200 joule per kilogram per degree Celsius. Very complicated units, right? So what does that mean? It means that for one kilogram of water, it increases its temperature by one degree Celsius when it absorbs 4,200 joules of energy. So that's what it means. Per kilogram. Per degree Celsius, it has to absorb 4,200 joules of energy. If you look at the table below, you will see that the specific capacity of water is relatively high when compared with other substances, and this is rather important. By the way, specific heat capacity only applies to pure materials only. For some other objects, where there is metal and plastic, for example, an electric kettle. It has a metal body and also a plastic handle. We don't talk about specific heat capacity. Rather, we will talk about the heat capacity of the electric kettle. Why? Because metal and plastic are very different materials. They have very different specific heat capacities. And different electric kettles may have different amounts of metals and plastics. So there's no way to tell the specific heat capacity of a electric kettle. And that's why we would rather talk about the heat capacity of those composite objects. Experiment. Determine the specific heat capacity of water. In the next lesson, you will be given a calorimeter. Together with a joule meter, you are going to measure the specific heat capacity of water. In the experiment, 
prepare a hundred and twenty cm clip of water and pour it into the calorimeter. You have to heat the water so that the temperature of the water increases by about eight degrees Celsius. About eight degrees Celsius. And don't forget to keep stirring while you are heating the water to ensure the temperature inside the cup is uniform. When the heater is turned off, measure the maximum temperature of water. Remember that you have to heat the water so that its temperature increases by only 8 degrees Celsius. By about 8 degrees Celsius. After that, you may apply equation 9 to find the specific heat capacity of water. So, what value are you expecting? For the specific heat capacity of water, and what is the unit of specific heat capacity?